So I figured I'd go over what's going on here. This is a 95 Jeep Cherokee Sport. It's nothing special, standard uh, 4 liter AW4 MP231. Dana 30, Crest rate and a quarter. Um, I bought it three years ago, thereabouts. It's got 175,000, miles. I don't remember exactly. Um, as you can see, it's got rust, as all Iowa Jeeps do for the most part. Uh, has an oil leak, but that's mostly my fault. It's spilling oil everywhere. Um, body was in decent shape when I bought it. Hit a deer a week later. Somehow bent the metal behind the mirror. Didn't break the mirror. Dent there. You see a big old dent in the rear door. Uh, I think at this point the only clean panel on it would be the front fenders. Uh, everything else is either dented or rusted. Um, yeah. Interior. Surprisingly very clean. Uh, this Jeep was not well maintained at all, so surprised to see the interior so clean. A um, little stain on the seats, but not bad. Uh, had carpet in it when I bought it, but the footwell areas were cut out. Um, carpet was cut into like a panel. So a previous owner had pulled the carpet out, that panel, to replace the floor pans rather than stripping the interior and they just stuck new sheet metal down over top of the rusted and non-existent flooring and cocked it so it rusted really bad um, I replaced the floor pans last winter or last fall because two winters ago my driver's seat fell through the floor the back corner just fell through, it rusted through so bad. Um, I finished driving that winter with the seat held up basically by the carpet because I didn't want to replace the floors yet. I know, not exactly safe, but it worked. I got through it, so. Um, as you can see, my new floor pan that I put in this winter is already rusting, or this last winter, um, or last fall, whichever it was. Uh, you get salt on your boots, and that goes on the floor, and that's two months of winter driving, and it's all rusted again, surface rust, but yeah, gotta love Iowa. Um, show you the back here. This door only opens from the inside, which is fun. Um, floors replaced front to back. The transmission tunnel was about the only floor that was in good shape. Uh, over the frame rails was not rusted and the leaf spring mounts were in okay shape but all the sheet metal was bad. Haven't put the back seat back in yet. This is using this to haul pallets last winter. And use it for deer hunting. So not driving the Comanches in winter. Uh, they're both rust free now so definitely not going to. Uh, I'll go back up front here, um, kind of over when I bought it. Uh, got it for 800 bucks, like I said, about three years ago. Missing the battery tray, missing the mechanical fan shroud, and the radiator was new, but was super loose. It uh, wasn't mounted properly, it was only held in by the hoses. Um, definitely not right. So knew there was an issue with that but the motor was sitting leaning heavy passenger so to me that said there was an issue with the motor mount um, didn't really care at the time it ran and drove uh, ran okay had a little bit of a misfire um, everything else seemed okay with it um, so like I said I bought it for 800 bucks got it home found the motor mount bolt snapped off in the block on the passenger side. It's a common issue for this era of Jeep. Um, something about the bolt length being too long, bottoming out before it actually reaches proper torque. So, got those replaced and replaced the vacuum lines. 
is they were leaking. Don't ever get silicone. Silicone is horrible. These lines are not good. Um, I will never do it again. Um, but replaced the vacuum lines. Did a general tune-up on it. Spark plugs and whatnot. Um, this had the infamous six-cylinder spark plug that had never been replaced because of the firewall interference thing. Um, it was very, very old. The other ones were replaced at some point. but So, new spark plugs, tune-up, pretty much fixed the misfire and the little bit of weirdness it had. Uh, drove it pretty much daily for about a year. Um, started to develop other issues. Um, started running a little rough, running rich. Uh, smelled like gas. Um, roughly two years ago, I did a compression test on it. Found cylinder three was low. It's like 95 psi. Everything else is 130, 140. So I knew there was an issue internally. Um, the testing I did kind of pointed me towards cylinder three exhaust valve sticking. Um, didn't really do anything about it. Just let it go because uh, it still ran. So uh, about that time, water pump went bad. I was getting some squealing from the belt, so I pulled it off and found that pulley loose. Uh, had this water pump in my parts pile. Um, threw it on there. Didn't have a gasket, so the gasket I cut out of a manila folder and just traced it out to the mating surface. And it's still in there. Surprisingly, it has not leaked. Um, so if you need a gasket for a water pump, manila folder works, apparently. Um... What else? Transfer case. Last year, last winter, the chain went slack and was slapping around, so I rebuilt that. Um, about that same time, the uh, motor started really running bad. Uh, it was really rough, smelled really bad, just getting like 12 miles a gallon. Um, still got me to work and back for the rest of last winter, but I knew I had to do something with it. So it was just getting worse. So uh, this year, I decided to pull it out and kind of do some work on it. I bought Engine Restore, uh, hoping that I could run that through and fix my low compression enough that I didn't have to tear the motor out apart yet. But um, went to replace the PCV valves because when I replaced the vacuum lines, I broke one of them and just kind of stuck the line on it because it still was there just came out vertically from the valve cover but pulled the PCV valves off and found chocolate milk found it under the oil cap as well pulled the dipstick which is reading about two quarts high also completely chocolate milk so I knew I was in for it then uh, pulled the radiator cap off and it was dry completely so um, yeah and like I said, last winter it was running rough. Overheated once because it ran out of coolant. So I started to realize at that point that it was drinking down the coolant. Um, I replaced the radiator at that point too, this spring actually, because it was leaking. But yeah, it's it was going through coolant. I was hoping it was just the leak, but obviously it wasn't. So went ahead and pulled the head off. Um, I guess I could show you the oil here. You can kind of see in there. It's darker than it was. It was lighter. You can kind of see it getting light from underneath. That's what I found. So if you see that, you got problems. But pulled the head off. It's over here with all the parts. You can see all the top end stuff. Bigger stuff on the roof. Um, organized motor parts. Make sure it all goes back in the same spot. Tray for all the bolts. Um, but yeah, this is the head. Let's see if I can flip it up one handed here. See right there, major issue. Cracked from that head bolt through the cooling jacket over to that one. Right there between cylinder three and four. Um, so that's it issue. That head's no good. 
Um, you can kind of see what else I found here. This head gasket, all of the cooling jackets are completely solid. That's what happens when you use stop leak. So that's no good. The motor was not cooling properly at all. So uh, I'm going to show you here. This is what I found when I pulled the head. As you can see, that is not a new piston. Uh, coolant acts as kind of a detergent and uh, basically cleaned it. Cylinder 4 had a little bit leaking in there. I wiped it off a little bit, but it was also pretty clean. But yeah, so not good. Uh, ordered a new head from French Lake Auto Parts out of Minnesota. Uh, 120 bucks shipped at the door. It's a used head. I think it's out of a 94 Cherokee. Supposedly has just over 100,000 miles on it. Um, I thought about going reman, but didn't really want to pay that much. Uh, cheapest I could find was like 300 and something. So went with used. Uh, comes with the rocker arms. Didn't see too many used ones that did. Uh, it's dry and dusty, so it looks like it's been out of the vehicle for a while. So I'm going to get that cleaned up and inspected and uh, throw it in the Jeep, I guess.